Good morning, Year Twos. Today is Monday, the 1st of February. I cannot believe that we are, are in a new month already. I hope you had a lovely weekend. I am going to be taking you through your maths learning for today. So I'm gonna share my screen so that we can start by warming up our maths brains. Okay, so we're gonna start by counting in ones from zero all the way to 100. I've got a number line up on my screen here and we've sent you a number line. So if you would like to go and get that and have it in front of you, that will help you with your counting as we count together. Okay, so put me on pause, go and grab your number line and then come back to me. Okay, welcome back. Okay, so let's start. So I'm gonna hover my pen over the numbers as we count. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Well done. I certainly feel like my maths brain's been warmed up. Now I'm just going to draw your attention to these numbers up here. I'm going to highlight them. Now, when you're saying these numbers, it's really important that we hear the teen, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, because we don't want to confuse them with 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So these are our teen numbers. And we've got our T numbers. So it's really important that we hear the teen as you say them. So make sure you're practicing doing that. Okay, let's carry on looking at today's learning. So this week we are going to be measuring length and height. And your first challenge is to measure three strips of paper. So in the planning, we've asked someone in your house to measure out three strips of paper for you. And then you have got to work out how long each strip is and record it. Now, how you measure it and how you record it is completely up to you. OK, so I want you to pop me on pause and come back to me once you've done that. Well done. Hopefully you've had a chance to measure those strips of paper. I wonder how you did it. I'm going to share with you some possible ways that you might have used. Now, in year one, you learn how to use what we call non-standard units of measure to measure length. For example, I've got my cubes here. This is what we call a non-standard unit of measure. So I've got my strip of paper here and I've laid my cubes alongside it, along the long part, the length of the strip. And then I can count how many cubes I've got. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I would write that my piece of paper is seven cubes long. So that's what we call a non-standard unit of measure. If you're measuring using a non-standard unit, so long as each unit is the same, it can be anything. So it could be 
how how many toy cars you could line up against your strip of paper or how many pieces of pasta you could line up against your strip of paper so long as each uh, unit is the same. In year two, we are going to be practicing using what we call a standard unit of measure. And before I tell you what that is, I'm going to show you something that you're probably really familiar with. So let me just grab one. Okay, so what have I got here? Call out to the screen. Hopefully you've all said a ruler. Yes, you're right. We use rulers a lot in school, don't we? Most of the time we use it for underlining things to make our work look neat and presentable, but also we use them in maths for measuring. We also might use what we call a meter stick, and we're going to look at that um, shortly. So here is my ruler. I'm going to bring my ruler over the orange paper so that you can see the numbers really clearly. Okay, so now you can see the numbers. So you can see these numbers here. We're counting in ones. Um, and I wonder if anyone knows what these units of measure are. What are they called when we're using a ruler? Call it out to the screen. So some of you might have said centimetres and if you did, well done. So yes, when we're using a ruler, we're counting in centimetres and this gap here in between the zero and the one and the one and the two and the two and the three, that's called a centimetre. So how do we write the word centimetre? I'm going to type the whole word for you so you can see how it is spelt. So this is our word centimetre and that's quite a long word, isn't it? So if I was having to use that all the time to record how long something is, if I had to write that every time, it would take forever. So there's another way of writing centimetre and this is how we write it. We need two letters, we need a C, and an M. So when we're writing centimetre in our math books, that is what we would write. So let's have a look at how long my strip of paper is then. Now, when we're using a ruler, it's really important that we use it properly. If I was to put the, it like that, starting on the number two, do you think that's going to give me an accurate measurement? Hopefully you've all said no. So when we use a ruler, it's really important that we start on the zero. So I've lined up my strip of paper so it's on the zero. And then we need to see where the strip of paper ends. And can you see the nearest centimeter it's up to is the number 14. So in year two, we need to record to the nearest centimeter. So my line is closest to the number 14. So we would say that the piece of paper is 14 centimeters long. So I'd write 14 and then the letter C and the letter M. Okay, let's carry on. So here's some of our vocabulary we might need to use when we are talking about measuring length and height. So let's read them together. Measure, height, length, shorter, shortest, taller, tallest, longer, longest, centimeter, and then there's the letters we use to record centimeter, a C and an M. Then we've got the word meter, and when we record um, how many meters, we just use the letter M. So this was our ruler, which had centimeters on it. And I mentioned that in school, we also have what we call a meter stick. And we're going to talk about that now. So most rulers in school can measure up to 30 centimeters. But what if you have to measure something that's longer than that? What could I use? So I'm going to show you move this out of the way. So I've got some pictures here. Obviously we've got our ruler here. I've got a tape measure. These children are using a meter stick but you're unlikely to have one of those at home but you might have a tape measure that looks like this. Maybe someone in your house uses that to do some measuring. So if you've got something that's um, a, a longer object um, that you need to measure you might use a meter stick or a tape measure. 
Does anyone know how many centimetres are in a metre? Call it out to the screen if you know that. Well done if you said 100, you would be right. So there are 100 centimetres in one metre. So 100 centimetres are the same as one metre. That's why I've used my equals sign there. It's equivalent to one metre. OK, let's carry on. So we're going to have a little practice of measuring accurately using my ruler. So I've got my three different pieces of paper here. Um, I've got my ruler here and I'm just going to show you how we're going to do this so that when you're doing it, you can remember what you need to start on. So call out to the screen, what number do I need to start on when measuring the length of this blue piece of paper? Call out to the screen, hopefully you said, zero you're right so I'm going to measure from the zero then I need to look at the nearest centimeter that my piece of paper gets up to and my nearest centimeter is 10 so this blue piece of paper is 10 centimeters long let's look at the green piece I'm going to move it down starting on the zero Okay, what is the nearest centimetre that ends up to? So we can say it's nearly 14. It's actually halfway between 13 and 14. So some of you might say it's 13 and a half centimetres. I'm going to say um, the nearest centimetre is 14 centimetres. I'm going to round it up to 14. You could write, if you want to be really accurate, 13 and a half. Okay, let's have a look at our purple piece of uh, paper. So I'm going to start on zero and it's closest to the number six. So I'm going to say that my purple piece of paper is six centimetres. So remember, in year two, we are um, measuring to the nearest centimetre. So with my green piece of paper, it was actually halfway between the 13 and the 14. In fact, it's almost, I would say it's just over halfway. So I said it was closest to 14 centimetres. OK. Now, we can also measure height. And that is how tall an object is. So I can still use my ruler in the same way, but I just need to turn it around. So have a look at what I need to do. I'm going to swivel it, hopefully. Hopefully it will do it. Here we go. Whoop. <laughs> so I am now standing my ruler up so that I can measure the height. So I'm going to start again on zero. I'm measuring my the height of my sand timer. So the bottom of the sand timer is on the zero. And this is the top of the sand timer because it's actually a three dimensional object. So this part here is actually going backwards. So if I look at where the edge of the sand timer is, it's got up to the number nine. So that means the sand timer is nine centimeters long. So I write my nine. I look at an M, C and M, nine centimetres. Right, let's just move my ruler out of the way. Okay, so your task today is to choose five objects from around your home and then measure the length of those objects using a ruler. If you haven't got a ruler in your home or a tape measure, we have sent you a template of a ruler that you can print off. Just make sure that when you print it off, you print it off at full size so that the scale is correct. Once you've um, chosen your five objects, measure them with a ruler and record the length in centimetres use, using our C and M to record the centimetres. Then I'd like you to choose one object that stands up tall and measure the height of that object, a bit like I did with my sand timer, and then record the height in centimetres. 
Once you've had a practice of measuring the length and height of some objects in your house, I've got some extra challenges for you to do. The first challenge is to use your ruler and draw a line in your book that is five centimetres long, eight centimetres long, and a line that's longer than four centimetres, but shorter than seven centimetres. And then your extra challenge number two is to measure the length of people's feet in your house. Who has the longest feet in your house? Who has the shortest feet? And I've got a question here for you. Do you think it's important that you measure the same foot on each person, their left or their right foot? And why do you think that's important? So a couple of extra challenges for you to do there as well. So enjoy your learning today, enjoy your measuring, and I look forward to seeing uh, your, the work that you produce. So have a great day and I will speak to you soon. Okay, take care, bye-bye.